this uh, hearing of the Budget Committee will come to order. I thank our witnesses for being here, uh, one of whom will be introduced by Senator Kane, who is here to uh, welcome someone to speak about an important issue in his state of Virginia. Uh, as we examine the looming economic and budgetary dangers of climate change, today we will learn about the strain it's placing on our defense operations and our national security. Climate change is a well-known catalyst of conflict and also threatens our military's infrastructure and operational readiness, and all of that comes at significant cost. According to a recent Bloomberg analysis, rising tides and powerful storms turbocharged by climate change are poised to hobble federal facilities worth at least $387 billion in coming decades, disrupting everything from veterans' medical care to military operations and space exploration. The vast majority of these costs are related directly to military infrastructure. For over a decade, the Government Accountability Office has identified climate change as a high-risk area for the Department of Defense and has highlighted billions of dollars in annual damage to our military installations. For instance, in a congressional hearing this month, the Air Force testified that rebuilding U.S. facilities in Guam damaged by Typhoon Mawar will cost $10 billion alone. That's twice what the Department of Defense spent rebuilding Tyndall and Offutt Air Force bases in Florida and Nebraska, both also devastated by climate change-related weather events. Around the world, nearly half of America's military installations are facing threats from rising sea levels and increased flooding, with serious damage becoming increasingly frequent. Naval Station Norfolk, the world's largest naval base, is particularly vulnerable. In Hampton Roads, persistent flooding, even on bright sunny days, disrupts operations and requires extensive and costly adaptation efforts. A former base commander estimated that Norfolk's useful life as a naval base could end in as little as 20 years, and he said that in 2015. So do the math. In Rhode Island, our Air National Guard 143rd Airlift Wing operates out of a high-risk coastal flood area, threatening its ability to deploy to protect life, property, and safety. Much of the neighboring electric boat submarine manufacturing facility, producing Columbia-class submarines, the Pentagon's top acquisition priority, also sits in the high-risk coastal flood area, vulnerable to storm surge and extreme weather. Across Narragansett Bay, the United States Naval War College and Naval Station Newport share causeways, which I've seen cut off by increasingly heavy rainstorms, New England's climate telltale. In short, repairing, rebuilding, and maintaining our defense infrastructure, the foundation of our national security, is becoming ever more costly in a world shaped by climate upheaval. Climate change is a source of geopolitical tensions, hence its acknowledgement as a catalyst of conflict. Around the world, climate change is destabilizing entire regions, stoking conflicts over increasingly scarce resources, driving impoverishment and migration, and creating new tensions in geopolitically sensitive areas. In the Arctic, melting ice has opened new sea routes, creating new security threats from Russia and China that require increased U.S. military and Coast Guard presence. Far away in low-lying Bangladesh, sea level rise and extreme weather could cause mass migration, perhaps 13 million people, toward and into India. On the other end of India, in Kashmir, tensions between a nuclear-armed India and a nuclear-armed Pakistan will worsen. As Himalayan glaciers disappear and disputes intensify over water resources and border management. It is widely accepted that climate-driven drought contributed to the ongoing conflict in Syria, fueling regional political instability. In Guatemala, Honduras, and El Salvador disrupted agriculture and worsened food and water insecurity has brought climate destabilization to our own borders. 
In the coming decades, climate change could drive climate migration of up to 200 million people worldwide, all making the world more dangerous. In that more dangerous world, military operations will be made more difficult and dangerous, as soldiers, sailors, airmen, and Marines have to work in unprecedented conditions, often testing the limits of human physical endurance. Already, air operations are affected by midday surface heat on air base runways. As many national security experts have recognized, climate change is causing environmental damage that affects global stability, our national safety, and our long-term fiscal health. And all that comes home to roost in America's budget. If you don't believe me, just read the Pentagon's and intelligence community's own reports. And on the subject of believing reports, let me close by asking unanimous consent that certain reports be put into the record that confirm concerns that have been raised here in the Budget Committee in earlier hearings with regard to insurance cost inflation and contagion of the insurance crisis beyond Florida, a May 14, 2024 New York Times article. With respect to coastal flooding risk, an April 29, 2024 Washington Post article. With respect to the dangers to agriculture, a March 27, 24, 2024 New York Times article. And with respect to the dangers we have repeatedly raised of systemic economic shocks to the American economy and even to the global economy, the Economist article of April 11, 2024, and the NBER working paper of May 2024, Macroeconomic Impacts of Climate Change, Global Versus Local Temperature, which says that a one degree centigrade increase in global temperature will lead to a 12% decline in world GDP and suggests that the harm from carbon emissions amounts to a, over $1,000 of harm per emitted ton. Without objection, those will be admitted to the record, and I turn now to my distinguished ranking member, Senator Grassley.